academic doing quadratic stuff in our graphing calculator. Okay, so this first one right here, okay? Here's what you're going to do, okay? They want you to find all the zeros and relative minima and relative maxima of this polynomial function, okay? What's a zero again? It's anywhere the graph touches the x-axis, either a bounce or a cross. Okay, that's what a zero is, or a root. It's another word for it, okay? You guys probably don't know what a relative minimum or maximum is, do you? It's kind of like, it's all like the humps and valleys. Okay, so let's, I'll show you guys first how to find all the zeros. Okay, it, with your graphing calculator, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, graph this first one in my graphing calculator. What's up? Yeah, come up here, grab one. So let's put that first one in there, okay? I'm going to go to my y equals screen like we've been doing all year, okay? X, 2, right? Hit the little caret button underneath clear. The 3, hit the right arrow key, minus X squared, minus 5X, minus 1. Okay, we see how I put that in there? We having trouble getting, okay. How do I make my window look nice? What do I hit? Zoom. Zoom, and I select what? Z standard. Z standard, okay. There you go. So that's my graph, okay? The zeros are gonna be where? Where the graph touches what? X axis, either where it bounces or crosses, okay? So we're gonna do zeros, okay? We've been doing this, okay? Hit second, calc. Zero. We want to select that zero option, okay? I've got this nice little cursor that I can move around with my right and left arrow keys. Don't hit the top or bottom. That will do absolutely nothing, okay? So by the time the fourth person asks me that today, okay, I'm, that's all you need to know, okay? Only the left and right are going to move you around, okay? If I want to find that first zero, what do I have to do? It's like left bound. What do you think I do with my cursor? I put it anywhere to the left of that first zero, of that first intersection. Ian and Ryan, please stop talking. Okay. When I'm to the left, I hit enter. All right. It's going to be right bound. What do I do for right bounds? I use my right arrow key. I keep pressing it until my cursor is to the right of that intersection point. Okay. And once it's to the right, I hit enter. And then it's going to say guess. What do I do when it says guess? Just hit enter one more time. I don't know what that screen means to this day. I don't know what it means. All right. And there's my first zero, negative 1.655. So negative 1.655 comma zero. Does it matter what we got? Just do it. It to the nearest 10, so I should do 1.7, sorry. Negative 1.7. Okay, and I've got to get those other two zeros, okay? So second, calc, zero, okay? I want to find that zero that's in the middle there, okay? It says left bound, so use your right and left arrow keys. Again, the top and bottom will not do anything. Move them to the left of that intersection that where it intersects the x-axis. Okay, hit enter. Right bound. Move the cursor to the right of where it intersects the horizontal axis. Hit enter. Guess. We just hit enter one more time. I don't know what that screen means, okay? Just hit enter. And you'll get the right answer. Negative 0 0.2. Okay. And the third one, second, calc, zero. Okay. Take your little cursor, scroll to the right with your right and left arrow keys. The up and down arrow keys won't do anything. Okay. 
left bound. I want my cursor to be to the left of where my blue graph intersects the x-axis. I want it to hit enter. Right bound, I want to use my right arrow key to put that cursor somewhere to the right of that same intersection. Hit enter. And when it says guess, I hit enter one more time because I don't know why that screen even comes up. Okay. So my answer is 2.9. It's similar, it's very similar. Okay? So how are we feeling about zero? Feeling okay about zeros? All right, we have never done minima or maxima before, so let's do that. Um, I, first off, what is a minimum or maximum, you think? A relative min or max? A relative max is going to be a peak. You guys see how there's a little peak right here? A little mountain top? Okay? This is a relative max of this function, okay? My relative min is right here. Okay? Is that confusing or? It is? Okay, it's fine. Um, relative max, so like this point right here at the top of this, I'll put my cursor on it. Right there, my cursor's blinking. That point right there, right, it's higher than the other points right, to, right next to it, okay? That blinking cursor right, the part of the graph to the left and the part of the graph to the right is below it, okay? For a minimum, if I put the cursor down at the bottom of that little valley there, right, on either side of my cursor, right, the graph goes up, okay? The points to the right and left of my cursor are higher than my cursor, okay? So let's find the maximum, okay? Let's find the maximum point there, okay? What do you guys think I do? Second calc. So hit second calc, good job. What do you think I want, which, which function? Value, zero, minimum, maximum, intersect, dy, dx, or integral of f of x? You want maximum, yeah. Very intuitive. Left bound, what do you think I do for left bound? So I put my cursor somewhere to the left of my peak. My peak's up here, it's anywhere to the left. Okay, hit enter, and then I want to put it somewhere to the right of that peak. Hit enter. When it says guess, what do you think I do? Enter one more time. There you go, negative one, comma two. That's my point right there. My x is negative 0 0.999998. That's your calculator's way of saying negative one, comma two. So your relative max is negative one, comma two, okay? Relative minima, second calc, minimum. Okay, what do you think I do for this one? Left bound, where do I put my cursor? Somewhere to the left of that little valley there. Where do you think I put my cursor when it says right bound? Somewhere to the right. I hit enter when it says guess. So my minimum is... 1.7 comma negative 7.5, okay? The x is 1.7, the y is negative 7.5. That's it. That's all she wrote for the first one, okay? Yeah, all uh, eight of those, okay? Let's do one more together and then let's do like two on your own and then we can start the homework, okay? I want to help you guys start your homework. All right. Let's do the second one. So go back to y equals x to the third. Hit the right arrow. Minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 7. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. How many zeros am I going to have here? One. Just one, right? It only intersects the x-axis at one point. Okay, so s let's find that zero, okay? Second calc. Zero. All right, we oh, gosh, sorry. 
put the cursor somewhere to the left of that intersection point there. Okay, hit enter. Put the cursor somewhere to the right of it. Hit enter. When it says guess, hit it one more time. 3.59, or 3.6, comma zero. Yep. Yep. Anything that looks, it's, yeah, I don't want to get into like too much technicality here, but anything where there's like a point where directly to the left and right of it, the graph is lower than it. Okay. Minimum, similarly, any, any place where dire directly to the right and left of that cursor there, the graph is higher than it. Yep. That's the definition. There's an very rigorous definition of a relative min and max. That I'm not going to unpack with you guys. Okay, so how do I find that maximum? Second calc max. All right, when it says left bound, make sure your cursor is somewhere to the left of that peak. Hit enter. When it says right bound, make sure it's somewhere to the right. Not too far though, don't go too far just somewhere directly to the right of that peak. Hit enter, hit guess, one comma negative four is my max. One comma negative four. Yeah. No, the quiz is not, nothing from today is gonna be on the quiz. Minimum, left bound for a minimum. The cursor somewhere to the left of my valley. Okay, and then the cursor somewhere to the right of my valley. Yes. 2.3 comma negative 5.2. Okay, we feeling okay? Do you, think guys, you think you guys can maybe do the next two on your own? Let's do three and four on our own. I'll be around to help. Did I have a hand over here? On the first one, there's three. So what's the degree of that first prop, the polynomial? What's the degree? Three, yeah. You'll have up to three zeros. So those, so you're always gonna, you're always gonna have three zeros, but only the real zeros are gonna show up on the graph. So if some of those zeros are complex, they're not gonna show up on the graph. Oh, what? Like how you did on your calculator? Yeah, so you can have up to three zeros on your graph. Sometimes it'll be one, sometimes it'll be two, sometimes it'll be three. Sometimes it'll be zero if it's even. Okay, so like something like number five could have up to four zeros. Or it could have three, or it could have two, or it could have one, or it could have zero. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys need to know this, but if the degree is odd, it'll have at least one. If the degree is even, it could have zero. It could have no
Okay, let's start the homework, because the homework's a little tougher. How are we feeling about this stuff? We feeling okay? We feeling bad? We feeling... Okay, let's do, let's do some homework. Because some of these problems are really hard. You don't, you don't want to do these on your own. Yeah. Yes, we're going to do them together. All right. Okay, now everyone, everyone's like, oh, how's math going to apply to my life? Well, 
here's how it's going to apply, okay? It does. All falling objects follow this uh, quadratic equation for their trajectory. All right. Good stuff. So here, so they give us an equation, right? So we've got a, a rocket that launches off. Okay, it launches off and then it falls back to the ground. So here's the trajectory of the rocket, this little curve right here, okay? That little graph right here, this is the trajectory of the rocket. It gives the rocket's height as a function of time. So after one second, it's about 100 feet in the air. After two seconds, it's about 200 feet in the air, okay? It gives you this equation, okay? It should say h of t negative 16 t squared plus 128 t, okay? And it graphed it for you right here, okay? So how long is the rocket, so let me erase some of my answers. Okay, yes. How long is the rocket in the air? Okay, eight seconds. Where'd the eight seconds come from? Where did I get that? <laughs> right, so the rocket is no longer in the air at the second point in time that its height is zero, right? At the, at the point that its height is zero, that it's fallen back to the ground, it's no longer in the air, okay? It hits a height of zero right at eight seconds, okay? Eight seconds. Okay. This one's not too bad. What's the greatest height the rocket reaches? Yeah, that biggest H right here, the peak, the peak height, right? That's at about 260. 260 feet. How high is the rocket after one second? How do you do that? Okay, cool. After two seconds, so after two seconds, about how high is the rocket? Is that 190? Okay. We sound like we're doing well. Is that? Okay. Is the rocket going up or down at that point? How do you guys know it's going up? What's going on on the curve at that at two seconds? What's yeah, it's increasing, right? It's going up, right? As I go from right to left there, I'm, my cursor is going up. So we're in, going up. After six seconds, about how high is my rocket? 190, okay. Is, are we going up or down? Down, no, okay. I didn't know if we'd be confused or not. <laughs> All right. Using the equation, find the exact value of the height of the rocket at two seconds. So what we're doing here is we're just plugging two into this equation. Okay. So negative 16 times 2 squared plus 128 times 2. Okay. You guys can do that. Right, just on the main screen of your calculator, right? But I'm going to show you how to do it using your graphing utility in a way that you'll just basically never make this any other. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to go to my graphing. I'm going to go to my y equals screen. Okay. I'm going to put that equation in there. Negative 16x squared. 128 x. Okay. So I just put the equation for the problem in there, okay? The question is find the exact value of the height of the rocket at two seconds. So we want to plug two into this equation, okay? Here's how here's the easiest way to do this is second quit. Okay. Hit the bars key. There's a key here that says bars, where my finger is, or where my Apple pencil is. Hit bars. Okay. Go to the Y bars menu. So hit the right arrow key, get to the Y bars menu. So 
select function, and I'll give you a list of functions. Okay. You want y1. Okay. We want y1 because that was the line on my y equals screen that we put our function on. Okay. I want to plug two. I want to plug the number two into y1. Okay. Once I have that y1 pulled up, I just do left parenthesis uh, two, right parenthesis. What that's going to do, if I do y1 and then with the 2 in parentheses, that's going to plug 2 into the equation I put on the y1 line. Okay? It's going to do it all, oh, sorry, it's going to do it all for me. Hit enter, you get 192. Okay? So the advantage of that is you're much less likely to make a mistake. Much more dependable. The ball is thrown in the air. Actually, I don't like the way I did this, so let me write it over here. What is the maximum height of the ball? How do you think we do this? Yeah, so let's graph that equation they gave us. That instead of using T, I use X. So I just put that in my Y1 line. Let's graph it. All right. Where do you think the max height is? At the max. Yes, at the top. So hit second. Calc. Max. Okay, left bound. Okay, take got my cursor. Yay. Okay, the right and left arrow keys will move my cursor around. The top and bottom will do nothing. Okay, so hit. Enter when your cursor is somewhere to the left of my peak. When it says right bound, I've got to take my cursor using the right arrow key. I'm going to slide it somewhere to the right of that peak. Enter. When it says guess it, enter one more time. There you go. So I get that point 1.28 comma 5.94. Which one's my answer? They want the maximum height. Is the x my answer or my y? Y. Okay. So it's y because y is my variable that represents height. X represents what? Time. Time. So I want the maximum height is going to be my y. 5.94. How long is the ball above 4 meters? How long is the ball above 4 meters? Anyone have any idea how to do that one? Yeah. So I don't plug in for what I do. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna graph the line y equals four. Okay? Alright, so the time, he, he, this, this part of the curve right here, this blue cap up here, right? That's gonna be when my height is above four. Okay? So what I need to do, let's look at when the ball first passes four meters. How am I going to do that? How do I find what point this is? We talked about it last semester. So they cross. Intersections. So I'm going to find the two intersections and I'm going to subtract their x coordinates from each other. Because the x represents time. Two 
calculator you guys something on that first homework problem. One fourth four x minus sixteen x squared. I'm gonna hit graph. What's going on here? What's going on? Too much, right? That doesn't look like a parabola. What do I need to do? Window. Increase your window, right? So my peak is gonna be somewhere up here, so I've got to make my y bigger. Window y. Let's make my y max like two hundred. Gosh, it's still not big enough. Okay, let's go to window. Let's do 500. is which one, my X or my Y? Y represents height. This is going to be when we hit my max height. What's going on here is you want to know what t is. You want to know, right? They're saying find the number of seconds. Find seconds. They want to know t when h of t equals 224. Okay. So for that, I find the intersection.
I'm going to graph y equals 224 on my graphing calculator. Okay. And I'm just going to find those two intersections. Okay. Well, when it reaches the highest 224 feet. Okay. So there's two intersections. Which one do I want? Which one represents when I first reach a height of 224 feet? The first one. Yeah, for Y2, yeah. yeah. I first reach that height on the first intersection. So I'm going to do second cal intersect. Okay. It first reaches a height of 224 feet at X equals 2 in 2 seconds. seconds will the ball hits the ground. So we want to know when h is, we set the whole thing equal to zero. We want to know when the height is equal to zero. We want to solve for t. Okay. Um, let's do this with my graphing calculator since that's like plus to know. So we want to find what on our graph. We don't need the 224 anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. We want to find what where the graph intersects what? The bottom. This is the first time or the second time? The second time, right? The first time it is like right before it launches, right? They want to know how many seconds have gone by when it hits the ground again. The second out to zero. Of course, your cursor somewhere to the left. Intersection to enter, but it's somewhere to the right. Enter, hit guess, nine. Nine seconds. Here's a good one. So I graphed this, the last problem. They want us to know how long after the rock is thrown is it, um, how long is it 370 feet from the ground? So I drew the curve y equals 370. Okay. Which intersection do I want? This one, the first one, or the second one? The first one, not quite, actually. Can x be negative? Can time be negative? So I have to work in the positive. 
Yeah, I want the right intersection because my value for time can't be negative. Thank you.